The 1960s came after a time of conformity in America. Due to the rising conflict and turmoil of the Vietnam War and the growing strength of the civil rights movement in America, 1960s youth became very conflicted and passionate, and many were dissatisfied with attempts at compromise made by the older generation. The optimism and prosperity fueled the American government in the beginning of the 1960s, which led to the government eventually extending new rights to women and minorities, funding new scientific research to send humans to the moon, and creating new programs to lessen the impact of poverty. However, the same driven spirit also led the government to become more involved in the growing war in Vietnam, sending forces to aid the South Vietnamese, who were fighting against the communist forces in North Vietnam. At first, it seemed like a righteous move to prevent the spread of communism, but the war effort soon led many to question why Americans were fighting in Vietnam. This disconnect led to more and more people beginning to question the progress of the United States. African Americans, especially those in the South, were still dealing with racism and mistreatment in schools, in the workplace, and generally throughout American culture. This fueled the Civil Rights Movement, led by Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., and also by Malcolm X. Many protests were held to bring about change, and some grew quite violent, with racists responding with violence in return. Still, by the end of the decade, the Civil Rights Movement had obtained many of its goals. The women's rights movement also gained traction, especially in the realm of the lack of decision-making rights over reproductive decisions. At the end of the 1960s, the female workforce had grown by 50%, and women enjoyed greater sexual freedoms and were able to make more decisions about their bodies. The anti-war movement became very visible and active in the 1960s, with many people believing that America was becoming greedy, power-hungry, and was trying to crush a movement for freedom. They also thought that the American military unfairly drew upon black Americans and poor people to man its armies. Young people were outraged as they were old enough to serve in the military and drink alcohol, but couldn't vote. Many protested by burning their draft cards and avoiding the draft in any way they could. One of the things probably impacted me the most is about the Vietnam War, and one of the things about the Vietnam War was that I was old enough, you know, at 18 to go fight in the war. I was old enough to go out and get drunk if I wanted to, but I had no say in the government because I wasn't allowed to vote because of my age. You had to be 21 years of age at that time to vote. I did other other things, you know, you try to fit in, and at that time everybody was kind of like burning their draft, draft cards and stuff, which I did too. Due to the growing strength of these movements, Many young people became more frustrated with American mainstream culture and values. They realized that the older generations, especially the government, were not doing as much as they appeared to be. They felt they weren't being listened to, and that the government was only complying to calm tensions. They began to question establishment values, and tried to distance themselves as much as they could from previous generations. Fueled by psychedelic drugs, rock music, and optimism, the countercultural parties swept America in the 60s. Widely known as hippies, they cared very much for personal freedom and favored gentle politics. However, they especially cared about Vietnam. They took a very novel approach to stopping the war. In May 1968, over 600 demonstrators gathered at the Pentagon and attempted to make it levitate. They filled the gun barrels of the National Guardsmen with flowers, and although the levitation didn't work, they made their mark on a generation. Woodstock was known as Three Days of Peace and Music. Held in the village of Woodstock in upstate New York in August of 1969, over 400,000 people came together to listen to music and spread love at the Music and Art Festival. People shared everything, from necessities such as food and sleeping bags, to drugs, tents, and positivity. There was torrential rain, but it didn't stop the cheerful population from enjoying performers such as Richie Havens, Jefferson Airplane, Janis Joplin, Joan Baez, Santana, Creedence Clearwater Revival, and Sly and the Family Stone. This was one of the last big affirmations of the counterculture movement in the 1960s, which was quickly be being reduced by the media to just hostility, political violence, and an epidemic of hard drugs. Even so, many people will fondly remember three days of peace and love. As far as my musical interests changing in the 60s, as the politics and the economics changed, it really hasn't affected what I wanted to listen to. I was introduced to rock and roll through the Ed Sullivan Show and the early station, radio stations at that time. 
so probably around the early sixty's when i first got interested in that kind of music it stayed pretty much steady throughout the sixty's and even into the seventy's even today i still like to listen to that same music of that era another way the youth of the nineteen sixty's rebelled against the strict and modest older generation was with their clothing the miniskirt came into fashion along with mod style featuring bright colors and geometric patterns. Clothes morphed from a symbol of status to a form of personal expression. Anti-fashion fashion also became popular and was a rejection of commercial fashion design. It often involved long, unstyled hair for both men and women and decorative facial hair along with blue jeans. It was very androgynous in a stark contrast from the clean cut, proper fashions of the 1950s. My impression was we were very uh, strict cold for school and clothing and we had to wear dresses below your knees. Um, if you wore a dress, you had to wear nylons or bobby socks. Uh, for gym, you couldn't wear shorts for gym. You had to have a one-piece gym suit. Um, very strict at home for dress cold. Uh, when uh, parents weren't around, then we would go into our short shorts, our short skirts and our leather dresses and stuff like that. In short, the turmoil of the Vietnam War, the growing strength of the civil rights movement, and the widespread counterculture of the 1960s led to a diverse youth culture that sought new ways of seeing the world and fighting the establishment in many different ways, from hippies to protesters in Washington. They were unsatisfied with the compromises of the previous generations and caused conflicts to bring about change in their own unique ways.